Hello and welcome to another glorious raining British day but today is a very exciting day for us and hopefully some of you because a lot of you have been asking us to do this and we are going to be measuring this uh, Peugeot Boxer van so we can produce another layout plan out for you guys so you can get started on your van build. <laughs> If you don't already know, uh, we measured our own long wheelbase sprinter van when it was like this. So about three years ago when we first got the van, we took a tape measure and a pencil to, to, to the whole of the skeleton and measured every single bit. So here to here, here to here, the cavities, the roof, the ribs in excruciating detail. And we put all the sketches into a PDF with all the measurements, details and van life wisdom. And we've asked you what vans you want us to measure now, so the most popular requests that we have had are the VW Crafter, the new one, and the Peugeot Boxers, uh, Citroen Relays, and the Fiat Ducato, which are the exact same van. And today we're measuring a Peugeot Boxer, which is so exciting because this has been so requested, and the link is in the description below if you would like to pre order this layout plan. It's going to be out very soon. Yeah, so this van is an L3H2, so Technically it's a long wheelbase, though the length inside is technically shorter than a long wheelbase sprinter or crafter just because they measure them differently. But the good thing about these, what they're called as Seville vans, is that they're wider and they're straighter than a crafter or a sprinter. So that basically means you have more width, so most people get these vans if you want to have bed here at the back widthways, because if I actually lie down, and I'm careful with your hoodie. Yeah, I'm one meter seventy-six or five foot ten. And let me go on a place where I haven't stepped on the floor. Over here. So feet there and head here. Obviously, this is without insulation and everything else. But this so, is pretty comfortable to sleep widthways, even at my height. So well, that's a good bonus. So today we're going to take you through the measuring process, just show you a bit of us measuring and our thoughts on converting this sort of van into a camper van. And also if there's any other different types of vans that you would like these layout planners for, then there'll be a form in the description below where you can essentially pick and choose exactly what van you would like us to measure. And if we get enough requests, then we'll go ahead and measure one of those for you as well. So it's unfortunately quite cold. We're gonna have to have the door open, but let's get cracking, shall we? All right, so this is my throne, and these are my sketches. So uh, right here we have some conceptual sketches of the van. These are basically drawn by eye and not to scale. But essentially I do these conceptual sketches and these ones happen to be green uh, because we printed them for a change. So the first thing actually about these sort of vans, first of all, this is a front wheel drive van, which means that the floor is actually lower down and our crafter, sprinters and other vans have a step here. This one does not have a step. This one, the floor of the van actually comes out all the way. Actually the same as the new crafter as well. I think that has a small step, but that was front wheel drive as well. You don't have an annoying step to build over. So that means the front width is actually even longer. like these sort of vans, these ribs, are a lot shallower than the crafter and the sprinter ones. The sprinter and crafter ones come down like five, six centimeters. These ones seem a lot shallower, but the roof is still just as sturdy. Because these are basically here to structural support, so when you stand on the roof you don't just bend the roof and fall in. Look how big this back one is. Let me measure that. That's like 88 centimeters for the distance between the back rib and the back door. That's good for a big skylight. Like if you wanted a giant skylight, because a lot of people put beds here at the back, widthways at the back, because it's wider. So if you wanted a giant skylight at the back, that's 
a giant skyline you could fit at the back. So the width is 1420, which is interesting because the distance between the wheel arches is 1420, which means that if you drive a straight line from the wheel arch up to the rib, it will actually, like the ply, would sit up until just before the rib starts to bend at the top. Handy, huh? I wonder if they've done that on purpose. They must have done that on purpose, right? Because, yeah, like, what I mean is you drive a line down like that. I don't know. I'm going there. No, no, no. There. Like that. That's a straight line. Eh, we'll find out later. According to the measurements, that's a straight line. Yep. We are on a tilt. Don't get people excited about straight lines in van builds. Hey, these, these vans are much straighter than um, the Sprinter counterparts, right? I forget how cold a van build is. You, you, so, you, sort, of, you sort of forget how, how much the thinkers don't work. Making progress. Okay, we're starting to describe the uh, curves of the van so we, we get the, uh, you know, the shape of the walls. <laughs> At least it's not minus seven, right? <laughs> I've just noticed something that's different from, again, the sprinters and crafters. I don't know if the L4 of these type bands have it. There's only one cavity here. In the sprinter and the crafters, you've got the middle bit and then the pain in the ass bit. <laughs> for insulation's sake, because we had to chamfer out the PIR board to because it gets narrower here at the back. The, is this straight? Is this a rectangle? Yeah, 66. Oh, oh. So this is equidistant across the entire length. This parallel. Is parallel. Oh. <laughs> On day two of measuring this Peugeot boxer, and luckily we have some sun today, which is excellent because we need to go underneath the van to sketch the underside of the van, which is the most helpful bit of sketch I have ever done for the sprinter, so I must do it here as well. And we need to go on the roof to double check where the uh, roof mounting, roof rack mounting uh, stuff are. You know, seeing an empty van is both exciting and daunting at the same time. Don't get any ideas. Don't get any ideas about what? Actually, no, don't worry, get, get ideas, because... Get uh, ideas for planning the next one? Mm -hmm. Actually, no, I don't think we'll get one of these for the next one. Maybe a little... We'll probably need a bigger one, but who knows. The thing is, I get, I get too excited planning a van build. Like, you know, the van build is all interesting, but I love the design design work, so I'm like, oh my god, I, I, need, I need to know this, I need to design this, I'm like, I need to just, like, catch each, each little corner Funny is like, oh, how's this gonna affect this and, and such? And I guess it's like also every every little tube and nook and cranny of like wires can fit there, pipes can fit there, conduit can fit there. We need to measure that, put that on the planner because if we were doing a van build in this type of van, we would want to know that little measurement to be able to plan around what the structure is. I suppose um, if you are just starting out and you're just sort of like the hobbyist, like you don't, you're not kind of a bit obsessed with this <laughs> yet. Don't let this scare you that you have to plan like this much it's fine you can just wing it you know buy the van and come in here and just start doing stuff and figure out as you go so like don't panic actually we talk a lot about this in the eight set of van life boot camp which is a series of workshops for uh you know van life beginners who are just starting off with their van builds and the link to that is in the description because that's now live so you yeah. can book your seat so don't miss them out because it's not going to be there forever there might be some but it's still a bit chilly uh-huh you know what the red coat means <laughs> uh, he's penguining out. A note to all van lifers, have work clothes in the van with you because there will be a point in, in your van life journey, maybe every few months or so, where you're gonna have to crawl underneath your van for some reason or another. Hi, I'm Mary. Just looking how wet Very? Very. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. The thing is, there's not a lot of vertical space under there. I mean, actually, this is ours. You can tell ours is a bit taller off the ground, even though ours is rear wheel drive. And there's, actually, there's actually a really nice cavity underneath here. Look how clear that is. I don't know if you get the light. <laughs> Come on. Ow, my knee. <laughs> uh. See that? 
that that is completely clear I think army crawl I'm not crawling in that <sighs> oh my god the, this bean this yeah. one yeah I don't know uh, uh, very claustrophobic dude yeah I can't fit under there yeah there's definitely less space than ours Under the exhaust. <laughs> okay. Penguin noises. Okay, well once you're past the exhaust and that beam. It's fine once you're in. It's fine once you're in. That beam is very low to the ground. The axle? Yeah. That is the axle, isn't it? That's where the leaf springs and everything are attached. Weird design. So distance between beam two and beam three. Oh, I need to get vertically underneath. Oh. Is four three five. Now comes the fun part. Tempt you to do another build? Um, during the summer or the spring, never again in a winter. I cannot do another winter, she says. Just, just, at the moment when you're freezing, you cannot do another another one. You just want to do in the van. Yeah. I think it's a lot nicer than a sprinter or crafter. Like the cavities are much more open. The walls are straighter, and there's basically a lot less constrictions and things like that to actually build things straight. Like I can imagine you can just go into a store and buy like an Ikea furniture and just fit it a lot easier. Things Maybe. Like that. What I, I like about it is that you can do your insulation system with a lot more freedom because yes. the, the, the ribs are farther back. So if you think about air gaps and how you want things to be sandwiched, you have a little bit more flexibility than with a sprinter without having sacrificed too much of the width. Yeah, and the so, cavity is a lot more open on the wall. There's not like lots of little sections. It's just here's one big open thing. Yeah. So in terms of just building that restriction, I actually prefer these vans to yeah. the sprinter to the sprinter and crafters. However, mechanically speaking, I still prefer the sprinter and crafters. So that's a bit of a pickle. <laughs> But uh, anywho, if you are starting a van build uh, for a Fiat Ducato, Peugeot Boxer or Citroen Relay, that is L what? L3H2, that one. this one. <laughs> and this layout planner and sketches are available for you and the pre-order link is in the description below. So grab that. And there is an early bird discount if you grab it now. Yeah, and the more of you that pre-order it, the quicker that this one designs it, sketches it and actually puts it up complete. Yeah, put me under pressure. <laughs> I'm just the one who puts the numbers on. She's the one who sketches it, so. <laughs> Alright, so the more of you buy it now, the faster you get it. And a huge thank you to Ant and Vicky for letting us measure their empty van. And now that we've finished measuring, they can crack on and convert it. It's currently January and they said they're going to be done by summer. So you know how van builds go, you definitely meet your deadlines. So good luck, guys. <laughs> Happy van building, everybody.